But like, artifact weapons and, and leveling them up, if they weren't big name weapons that weren't for the player, I think that would have been fine. I think the artifact weapon system is cool. But it, sh it shouldn't have been the special weapons. Yeah, everyone does have some really awful stuff. Like, that's the other one, I think, for shamans. Like, Thrall just comes up to you and says, here's the doom hammer. You're so much cooler than me. And then he just he just quits and he's done. He leaves. It's just like, ah, oh, come on. Really? Really? But, um... Unpopular opinion, probably as well. I really like Shadowlands. I thought Shadowlands had an amazing initial launch. I thought a lot of the zones and stuff were interesting, how they were all very separated. But the problem with Shadowlands is that it was at the same time as COVID, and they didn't fulfill all of the, the, the promises that the, the game sort of imaginarily wrote. I feel like there was a lot of scope for what they could have done in Shadowlands and there were a lot of patches that we needed and we needed them fast but we didn't get any of them because everyone was too afraid of infecting each other with the super virus which you know fair enough um but yeah Serpent Tax came back to World of Warcraft for Shadowlands and it was just like the one time that the patching slowed down to nothing and we ended up with these great big swaths of time where the game needed a lot of patches and we didn't get any and then Serpent Pack said, I don't want to play this, we're not getting the patches we need, let's go do something else. So I had to quit Shadowlands prematurely. Because he left, so I left. Yeah, I think um, I actually liked all the openings to all the different zones in Shadowlands. I thought the one with the, the vampire, the Venthyr, were super interesting. The way that you end up working for the villains without even realizing it. And then you kind of, you end up in a situation where you find out, oh, okay, you're working kind of really for the wrong side. And then you join the counterculture. You join the rebels, and I thought that was totally boss. The one that I didn't like was Bastion and the uh, the blue people. Other than the owls were hilarious, the blue people were so absolutely rigidly boring that it did send me to tears a bit. And then you know fairies aren't especially my cup of tea. So the fairyland, I liked the zone, but I just didn't like the um. You know, the faction. And then Maldraxxus was absolute king. I didn't find enough time to play my Maldraxxus zombie warrior kind of kind of playthrough. So I ended up playing a lot of Shadowlands during Dragonflight. Because nothing is worse than Dragonflight and Dragonflight story. So while I was subscribed for Dragonlands, Dragonflight, I ended up playing a lot of Shadowlands and just doing the class hall, finally, for Maldraxxus. So, big oof on the fact that, you know, I brought Dragon's Flight and played Shadowlands. Sorry, Blizzard, but you didn't make Dragonflight interesting enough. I did, in all fairness, I did... Hold on. Oh, I see one of the Black Knights. I was right to turn this to night time and have a look around. In all fairness, I did do, you know, enough of Dragonflight to get all the daily this and that out of the way. And Dragonflight, it was less serious gamer in the fact that you needed, didn't need to spend 120 hours constantly, repeatedly trying to get to where you needed to get. With Dragonflight, you could do a bit and then be done which give you free time to do other stuff it wasn't like an immense always on grind so I liked that Dragonflight didn't take up all of my time it gave me time to do Shadowlands whereas Shadowlands was so always on I I couldn't even log on to another character there was too much to do on each individual character that you couldn't play ults and I love ults oh my god I'm thinking I should have found this guy earlier 
That's alright, these guys are spicing up the fight. Shazam! Ash of War repeating thrust. Cool. Oh, nice, nice. Um, that was good that you, you came back to say hi to people. I do like to catch up with people. Uh, where was the total time sync? I really feel like it depended which expansion you were playing in. I felt like I had a lot of free time to hang out with people during the original vanilla game and TBC. In Wrath of the Lich King, I had a certain amount of dailies that I needed to keep on doing. And then, like, Mr. Pandaria kind of exploded with stuff that you needed to be doing all the time. And it, it kind of varied and went up and down a lot. Battle for Azeroth, I did some of the seasonal, like, do enough mythics to get all the plus 15 to the mount. That took up a lot of time. Uh, I did the same any time I was resubscribed to World of Warcraft. I would dip in late into a season and just go for doing everything on plus 15 for the super rare mounts, or I'd dip into PvP for super rare mounts. And, uh, yeah, I have an embarrassingly large amount of, of cool stuff in World of Warcraft that's very hard to get. Because I don't value my time at all. <laughs> and I like to have fun. Oh, but for World of Warcraft... Because it's an online game, and as soon as you log in, or as soon as you talk to anyone, or see anyone, it is all spoilers, non-stop, all the time. People are wearing spoilers, people are riding around on spoilers, people are talking in all the chats about spoilers, so, oof, it's tough. Like, you can log into World of Warcraft and people will tell you how all the Harry Potter films ended and totally spoil those, all your movies. It's rough out there. <laughs> I know, but I'm going along with it for the joke. I'm completing the joke. We're a joke team. Come on, high five. Uh, so, apologies to anyone watching this on, on YouTube later on that we just, like spoke about nothing but wow over the top of Elden Ring. I appreciate that sometimes there isn't too much crossover between people who enjoy World of Warcraft and people who enjoy Elden Ring. But hopefully hopefully some of you that have played both will will enjoy you know what, what, what we talked about. Oh yeah, there's not going to be a guy here because he died. The uh Yuna or Yura, the bloody finger hunter. Really difficult to like figure out like where we might find some of these extra nighttime enemies. Because I guess I just have to go everywhere and hope. Let's, um, let's run across into the new zone and up to like Castle Morn. And like, there's a bridge over here as well. Like, if they're like bridge guardian guys. I, I saw a YouTube that was like Harry Potter with guns, and I almost like exploded with <laughs> laughter. There's so many bits where it's just like, oh, they've just removed the graphic for the spell and <laughs> put a gun in someone's hands, but it's just perfect. It still works. It still works, and it works too well. There's a guy with a baluster down there that I don't like. I'll see if I can make him fire at like the palisade on the left again so that I don't get exploded. Oh, he missed his chance. Get him! Boom! Oh, I need to know what he dropped. Yoink. So 
this is where Edgar and his daughter were. Until Edgar tried to kill me and then I killed him. I suppose this is the other thing. We don't know how long, like, it's actually night, night. Or if it's, like, early morning and it doesn't count. Like, how are we going to know other than, the, like, the guys won't appear? But because I don't know where the guys are... Like, I'm stuck. Because it, it could just be... You know, that, uh... It would have been a guy here if I'd made it night. Ooh. Hello. It's our boy. That didn't go how I imagined it. Not not even not even close. Oh. Across the planet. Oh, cool icon. Yeah, not as smooth as the other one. Oh, you're off to lunch? Get me some. <laughs> if I don't if I don't see you when you're back, uh catch you to uh, catch you on Monday. But if I am here when you're back, because I'm we're going till six. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully you'll just catch us in a minute. So... Is this where he was? Oh, there he is. Wow, so I, I just missed millions of bosses because how... How would I even know? Wow, I didn't know the story of Arthas was based off of anything. That's cool. Why won't he look at me? X gon' give it to ya, he gon' give it to ya. Barricade shield. Knight Rider's flail! No way! Is this it? Blood loss build up. Flail with two additional bludgeoning heads. Yeah, yeah. Weapon of the Knight Cavalry who rode funeral steeds. The large spikes make it highly effective for inducing blood loss, but also demand high dexterity to wield. Ah! Spinning chain. Spins the striking part of the player at high speed to attack. Follow up with a normal or strong attack to link the momentum of the skill into a successive attack. We got, we got it, we got to try this. Oh yeah! Oh, damn. I like how just doing uh, this part constantly drains my mana. <laughs> I'm using all my mana so effectively. Oh, no, no. Wasted it. Yeah. It is hard to be original unless you just make up some complete nonsense. I mean, Elder Ring's original. It's it's all crazy nonsense from the planet Zorg. Like, literally, if you told me the people at FromSoft visited another planet to get their ideas, I would believe you. Because everything is just crazy in Elden Ring. I don't even know what the what is. It is bizarre. So I thought maybe these guys would be like bridge guardians. 
uh, as just like a guess, but this wasn't really a bridge. So, I don't know. Let's try this one. Let's try going to up to the castle. George R. R. Martin helped with the world building, so I bet he took some ideas he's clearly already had from Game of Thrones, etc. There's always influence everywhere. Anyway, most of the stuff is based on Christian or pre Christian stuff. Yeah, I think some of the, like, the, um, the pagany things that you can look at pretty cool because often a lot of people won't have heard of specific things yeah yeah I'm sure there's billions of bits of interesting Japanese folklore like the um, you know the tangus and stuff and all sorts of uh weird things with snakes and whatnot. So, um, I really enjoy the game Ragnarok Online. And there's a lot of zones in Ragnarok Online that are, like, based on different countries. They've, they've got they've got some good Japanese stuff. Even though it's a Korean game, they, you know, they have a Japan zone that's full of Japanese, like, um, just, uh, fairy tales and monsters and stuff. Oh, damn! Oh, no. No, not one of these again. Please be low level. Please be low level. Oh, thank God. These things are horrifying. Oh, it's like if Tweety Pie was a zombie. It's so nasty, it's so nasty. Fire, fire, fire. Bigger fire. Oh wow, so that's twice then. Arthas and Gandalf. Cool. I think some of the um progressive rock bands that I listen to might be may, might be Finnish. Uh, there's a lot of like Sweden, Finland, Denmark stuff for me that I like I I shouldn't put it all in the same category, but sometimes, you know, I, I can't think of which specific thing the, the different thing that I'm thinking of is from. So sometimes I, I, I just think of the whole region of of that area. It's pretty cool. Got your Scandinavian Vikings and such. And Vikings are always cool when they come up in video games. How do you use an ancient sacrificial rite? A deathbird is depicted as a malevolent deity. Oh, wow. If you look at the axe on its side, it's a bird's mouth that opens up, and out of the mouth is coming the, the, the axe blade. Oh, that is freaky. It's got like an eye on the side as well. It's like a 2D bird. The power of the rite yet lingers. A small amount of FP is restored upon slaying a foe. And it's got wild strikes. I think other axes that on yeah yeah it's pretty awesome the axe blade looks like it fits a neck yes yes the whole bird's like head is sprouting out of the handle and it's so cool. yeah there's um 
It's a bit of a weird, like, game that I'm going to put up on the, uh, the recordings. I'll probably, you know, stream it before the recording. I might as well. Um, it's called, there's a game called For Honor. And I really like the single player missions. A friend, uh, bullied me into buying, buying it on release for full price for lots of monies. And like every story where I mention a friend, they wanted me to play it for one day before they just said, you know what, I'm not playing this anymore. After they made me spend all of the monies. And, uh, yeah, For Honor, I think, was really, really interesting, and it had, like, a mix of Japanese samurai, Vikings, and English knights in For Honor. For the single player, is actually really, really interesting, and it has a really good showcase of how controls could be done in the game. They're kind of Dark Souls-like on the control pad, but they're a little bit different. You also have, on your weapon, a way to... Uh, affect which way your weapon's going to swing and if there's no bots in the game because I don't think there were bots in the game when you could first play it I don't, I don't think I'll play it online but if there's bots in the game we'll do like uh, a few games with bots but also the, the single player stories like that are tutorials kind of teach you how to play and it's, just, it's really really cool and just the the game's world is just like what about a world where a load of samurais, knights, and vikings were just thrown in an area and they all wanted to own the land? A three versus 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 battle. Go! Party was the religion at the time. Actually, there's a very little difference. Yeah. I don't know if you'd get burned at stake for saying... I believe the goblin man's up the hill and he and he takes all the children and that's why the children are dying when uh, everyone around you also believes it. I remember learning in history class many, many moons ago that at one point in history in England and maybe even other places in the world, they believed if you had a headache, you had a, uh, a demon in your skull. So the cure for a headache was to drill into your skull to allow the demon to get out. And you know, I guess at the time you wouldn't call other people crazy for getting a hole drilled in their head to let the demon out. If you also believe that when you get a headache there's a demon in there and you need to uh, let that bad boy out. I'm sure even modern everything doesn't have all the answers to everything so um I guess we'll end up in a situation in the future where we just think everything's just crazy. What we believed in the year 2024. Can you believe these guys still still have the this and the that? Yeah. I mean, what, what I'm thinking of and the reason why I was even thinking down this line of thought was recently we were talking about we're going to be able to see Bloodborne on the stream. I was thinking about all the crazy stuff that Victorian England used to believe in. Even though it wasn't all that long ago, they believed in some pretty wacky stuff. So I think Bloodborne could be absolutely, hands down, the most horrific game that we see ever. So it, it's, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I think because, didn't, you know, pagan religion 
say that April the 1st was the start of the new year. So Christian religion decided, well, that's dumb. We don't like that. So we'll make April's Fool's Day, which is us as a religion laughing at your your mythology that something, something, something happens and it's the new year. So we'll just turn that into into a, into a joke on you. April's Fools. <laughs> total religious bullying, but um, there it is. I can't help history. I think all sorts of stuff like this is really, really interesting. As long as you're talking with people that, that don't get mad, mad about it when you broach some subjects with them, like you, you, you end up with some people on the internet that just get absolutely crazy angry over absolutely nothing or just talking about things. So as long as you're hanging out with cool people that don't mind discussing stuff. It's nice to know like, when you enjoy a video game, and then you find out that it's all based on on something really, really interesting, that's either historical or, or, or a legend of a place, it's so much fun that you can do extra reading outside of the game and say, oh, wow, cool, I can find out more about why my character did this and what my character's doing. Even if I've turned off the game, it's there. It's like a real thing that happened that they took it from. Yeah. I think my um, plan of like, oh, let's just ride around the world at night and find bosses is a little bit insane because the world's so big. I just, I think I forgot for a second that the world's so damn huge, so we'll just like, we'll do one more zone while we're just chatting away about other stuff as well. And then, uh, maybe we'll give up, because we looked uh, around this kind of easiest zone. And then, could, I can't even fit in my head imagining turning on night mode and running around this zone looking for extra bosses, because this zone is mean. Like, maybe, just maybe, I could imagine turning on night mode and running around this, but there's so much lake to cover. I don't know how I would even find any of this stuff. I don't think I'm ready for night time in this zone if there's any extra bosses. I'd just get annihilated. I haven't even cleared this zone. Oh dear. My game just, like, exploded. Yeah, Shazam, hit the desktop. Found a boss on a thousand hours into the game. Jeez. Just, uh, launching the game again. Sorry about that brief interlude. I think it's twice that I've crashed when I've been, like, on the map for a little while and then came out of the map. I only had two crashes, and both of them, I think I was on the map really recently, before it went bang. So uh, do let me know if the picture comes back up. Hopefully you have picture now. Oh, so yeah, uh, considering the word Creed as well, I thought it was interesting on the game Assassin's Creed, that they have like this disclaimer at the beginning saying, don't be mad at us, we're a big team of people that believe in all kinds of belief and you know don't take anything in our game too seriously it's not based on real life 